Caracas, Venezuela days before a polarizing vote to start rewriting its constitution, Venezuela is convulsing to a rhythm of daytime strikes and nocturnal clashes. The most recent violence drove the death toll from months of unrest to 100 on Thursday. Most of the dead in anti-government protests that began in April are young men killed by gunfire. The toll also includes looters police allegedly attacked by protesters and civilians killed in accidents related to roadblocks set up during demonstrations. The count has been highly politicized, with the opposition and other government agencies reporting varying tolls and causes of death that focus blame on the other side. The protests began over moves by President Nicolas Maduro's government to restrict the powers of the opposition-controlled National Assembly. But the mounting deaths of demonstrators have become a separate source of outrage for the young people who march during the day and assemble nightly to fight the police and National Guardsmen at improvised barricades across the country. The ones who have fallen fighting repression motivate us to keep fighting, said Sandra Fernandez, a 21-year-old university student. A riot security force member fires his weapon at a rally during a strike called to protest against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's government in Caracas, Venezuela, on Wednesday, July 26, 2017. Reuters the country's chief prosecutor reported Thursday on Twitter that a 16-year-old was killed at a protest in the capital overnight while a 23-year-old man was slain at a demonstration in Merida State. The two killings pushed to the century mark the human toll of a political crisis that has brought the oil-rich South American country almost four months of near-daily protests, thousands of injuries and arrests and a two-day general strike that shuttered businesses nationwide this week. The bridge that connects Venezuela and CCUTA, Colombia, has always been a busy border crossing, but the number of Venezuelans walking into Colombia only increases as the violence and instability in their country intensifies, reports CBS News correspondent Manuel Boyorquez. The luggage coming through makes the border look like an airport. Thousands of Venezuelans cross daily in search of food, medicine and work. Some return home, but Marcos Gonzalez said he can tea. His wife, Liliola Gonzalez, and son, who recently had heart surgery, came with him. There is no medicine, she said. He has autism too and needs medication. The death toll in Venezuela appears likely to keep rising in the coming days. Opposition leaders have called on supporters to convene in the capital Friday at the end of a 48-hour general strike that began Wednesday. On Sunday, the government holds a vote that will start a process of rewriting the constitution by electing members of a special assembly to reshape the charter. The opposition is boycotting that vote, saying the election rules were rigged to guarantee Maduro a majority and arguing that a new constitution could replace democracy with a single-party authoritarian system. The chief prosecutor's office has released little information about the victims of the unrest, but at least 44 are believed to have been shot while participating in protests. Many of those deaths are blamed on armed motorcycle gangs of government supporters known as colectivos who are often seen shooting indiscriminately at protesters while police and troops stand by. The level of impunity is extremely high, and that continues on to a situation like this, said David Smiled, a Tulane University expert on Venezuela. If you look at the violence it would appear that this time around, 